In this video, we will talk about how easy it is to create REST based web services with Spring Boot. Spring Boot project is a great way to get started rapidly building your Spring application. With Spring Boot taking care of a lot of settings and configurations automatically, providing you an application you can just run. Spring Boot at the same time does not get in your way if you want to have customized settings. In this video, we will create a Spring Boot project, add a model, service layer and controller to it. We will create REST based endpoints which can give us both JSON and XML responses. Finally, we will make the changes to create a war instead of the executable jar file which Spring Boot creates. So let's get started. Here I have my Spring Tool Suite open. If you want to learn step by step downloading and starting Spring Tool Suite, watch my video Spring Boot Building a Spring MVC Application Part 1. Let's now create a Spring Boot project. Let's go to File, New. It comes up with Spring Starter Project, but let me show you where to find it in the categories. Go to Other, go down to Spring, and then choose Spring Starter Project. Click Next. If you are familiar with Maven, it is building it in Maven style using a default executable jar file. There are several dependencies you can choose from, however, we just need the web to build the REST based web services. So let's just choose that and click next. Click finish. It is creating the project structure, downloading dependencies and auto generating some code. All right, so the project is created. Let's look at its structure. We can see the Maven build and its familiar folder structure. Here is the pom.xml file. Let's look at the dependencies. It has the spring boot starter web and test. If you go to the dependency hierarchy, you can see that it has Jackson in the path. Jackson would enable the creation of JSON output. Let's go to source main Java, click on the package demo and open up the demo application.java file. Inside it uses Spring's annotation based configuration. Spring Boot application annotation is equivalent to configuration, enable auto configuration and component scan annotations. Let's fix the imports. It uses the configuration annotation to indicate that this class is a configuration class and may be processed by the spring container to generate bean definitions and service requests for those beans at runtime. Enable auto configuration as the name indicates enables auto configuration of the spring application context and tries to configure automatically based on its best guess as to what you might need based on class path etc. Component scan provides component scanning directive. By default, it is just going to scan the demo package, but let us add some packages to it, namely the controller package we will create for creating the controller and the service package for creating the services. All right, first let's start creating our domain object. Let's create a new package for that. Let's right click, choose new package call it model and click finish. Let's create now a model object. So let's right click, choose new class, call it person and click finish. Let's create some attributes for the person object. Let's have a string ID, string first name, string last name and int age. Let's right click, choose source, generate getters and setters, select all and click OK. So the getters and setters are generated for us. Let's save our changes. Next, let's create a service package. Right click new package call it service click finish let's create a person service class now right click choose new class person service finish i'm going to paste some code over here to save us some time Let's go over this code. 
we start off by adding the service annotation which is a standard Spring annotation. And since we have added the service package to the component scan, Spring should be able to find it. Inside, we create a hash table containing a string key and a person object. In the constructor of the person service, we create a person, fill it and add it to the hash table with ID 1. Create another person and add it to the hash table and add it as ID 2. Next, we have a simple method get person which takes in a string of type ID. It looks in the hash table and if it finds that key, it returns the person object with that ID or else it returns null. We have another simple method get all which simply returns all the persons or the hash table persons. This is just a simple demo service, but in a real service, you will maybe talk to the database layer and obtain the data with which you can fill the model objects. Let's save our changes and next, let's create the controller package. Let's add a class to it and call it person controller. Again, let me paste some code over here to save us some time. If you notice, it has the rest controller annotation at the top, which is equivalent to the controller annotation and response body annotation to indicate that whatever is returned is the response. Using add request mapping annotation, we map the slash persons in the URL to this controller. Using Spring's auto wired annotation, we wire the person service. Next, we have our rest endpoints. Add request mapping all map to the get all method, which returns the hash table returned by the person service dot get all method. Request mapping with a path parameter of ID. Notice it is within curly braces to indicate a path variable like slash person slash ID. We get that as a method parameter path variable with the name ID. This method will return the person object returned from the person service dot get person method taking in the ID. Since Jackson is in the path, calling these rest endpoints would render the response in JSON format. All right, so that's it. Let's save our changes. Right click the project and choose run as Spring Boot app. This will start the embedded Tomcat and deploy the application over there. Now let's go to our browser and type HTTP localhost 8080 persons slash all. We see the JSON response of the hash table showing us both the IDs 1 and 2. If we had deployed it on an external Tomcat under web apps and then folder demo, your URL would be http localhost 8080 slash demo slash persons slash all. Now let's replace the all with one. So this returns the response from the get ID method and you can see the JSON response for the person object with ID 1. Let's change it to ID2 and we see the response for ID2. So this is how simple it is to create a REST based web service using Spring Boot. Spring Boot took care of most of the plumbing for us. If we need an XML response, all we have to do is go to the person object and put the XML root annotation over there. Let's fix the import. Let us now stop and start the application again. Now back in our browser, let's access persons slash 2. Now we can see the response is in XML format. If you right click and view source, you can confirm the XML format. If I put a dot XML at the end, then I am more explicitly asking for an XML format. However, if I change it to a dot JSON, I see the JSON response. So based on how the client wants it, appropriate response is rendered. If you want to deploy the REST based web service onto an external web server, then you can convert the executable jar file to a war file very easily. Here is the pom.xml file. Let's change the packaging from jar to war. Right click, run as maven build, 
enter a goal of package and click run. You can see that it has created a war file. So in this video, we started off by creating a Spring Boot project, added model, service and controller layers to it and then using the request path, controller and response body annotations, created REST based endpoints. We saw how to get the response in both JSON and XML format. Finally, we saw how simple it is to convert it to a war file to deploy it to an external web server. And all this happened without us writing a single XML line and with Spring Boot doing most of the plumbing for us behind the scenes.